and I tried to convey that as best as I can in a short amount of time. I wanted to shortly convey, and I, I knew they kind of, they they were a little perturbed because I like I, I expressed it as as beautifully as I can, and then for them to be like, well, you know what? I didn't say it wasn't beautiful, and then like I like again, bless her heart. I I, I wasn't trying to put her down. Right, and, and I try, I wanted to, I'm not a type of person, especially in my format, like, you know, when I when I come to apologetics, it's always about love, mercy, and compassion. I'm not trying to, it, the idea is not to win arguments, the idea is to win souls, right? And so, I, I can't, I can't just be like, you, well, you're wrong, because Jesus is the way, the life, the truth. If you be <laughs> studying Buddhism, like, get out of here, you pagan, you know, I can't be like that, right? Um, yeah. But... At the same time, there, there, there is some truth. There is objective, divine truth in Jesus Christ. Oh, and let me, sorry, before you go, thank you, David, for sending me the link. This was so awesome. I, I Like, it met my expectations. Um, I, I, like, I knew it was really, like, obviously, it's LA Times. Um, very, very woke, very liberal um, with the he, hims, she, hers and everything. So I really knew I was getting in, myself into. And so even in our small discussion, and I thank God that we were in the same room. Um, and so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead with your initial thoughts. Okay, so I'll open it up and I'll see you all back uh, in about 30 or 40 minutes. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so pause real quick. This is the moment in the virtual chat Zoom that I saw one of my friends, David, in it. So I'm like, hype. I don't want to give it away that we know each other. But I was like, I was so ready. I was so excited. I was so down. So it was so great. So, yeah. And David? Hi, I'm David Agtrap. I'm calling in from North Hollywood. Great. Welcome, welcome. And Mitch? Hey, what's up? My name is Mitch. Um, calling from Las Vegas, but hometown is Granada Hills. 818, what up? First question, uh, we'll just go right into it. And um, how does your family practice Catholicism? What does it mean to you to be a Filipino-American Catholic or a Filipino-American who practices Catholicism? They planted seeds, but it wasn't necessarily um, super, super enforced, I guess. And from my parents' perspective, it was, it was more of a cultural thing than a, you know, deep devotion. The the main drivers of Catholicism in my family were mainly from my, uh, my dad's uh, eldest sister. And I believe everybody else in my family just kind of did it to fit that cultural, uh, the, the cultural expectation. Like I, I did go to, you know, CCD uh, when I grew up. I grew up in New Jersey, went to CCD in the East. Um, but I feel like that, you know, my, my parents, you know, I went through a first communion confirmation. Um, you know, I didn't, they didn't push me really to do anything other, other than that. Now as an adult, I have a really different view. Like I started to adopt more like Buddhist practices, started to go to yoga. And those are things in Catholicism that are like, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> At the same time, I feel kind of guilty. Like I should have something that is structured the way I was raised, but I have that tension of like the judgment that came with being Catholic as a child. And I don't want to put that burden on my daughter, you know? And I respect so many different paths. Like if you are Catholic, that's fantastic to me. If you're something else, that's fantastic to me. And so I guess it's a complicated question for me because what does it mean to be a Filipino American Catholic? Like there's so much hiding and shame when you don't identify as Catholic. Um, but then there's like this other joy of like the nature of the Filipino culture where people are kind and, you know, people think of the whole and I, I, I can see the fruits of where Catholicism's roots have really helped to make our, our culture so beautiful, but also the parts that are so painful about our identities. And so growing up, I think there was with all my cousins and going to like, um, I'm not you're familiar with going to Santa Nino and everything. So it was this level of uniformity that I find very comforting when I'm talking to my parents or when I'm talking to my cousins. I don't have to really debate about spirituality because we're all, all Catholic. So I found that level of comfort. So much so, I think um, I'm in the Air Force. And so when I went to 
like downsides in my life, it was always Jesus that I was coming back to. When I go to a different base, I'm like looking at the, the closest Catholic church. So I want a, that solid ground for me, you know? And there was times in boot camp and there's times in my lower life that I feel like I have to put my everything that I'm suffering at the foot of the cross. And so to me, I find it so beautifully in the Catholic Church that I can do that. I Obviously, I pray the rosary. I pray all this stuff. So I, I view it in a different way that I there was so much intellectual and spiritual beautifulness that I find in Catholicism. Um, so I come from a different viewpoint from the um, everyone else here, or at least the folks that have mentioned. I, I find so much beauty in the Catholic Church. I can kind of expand on it a little bit. Um, I really loved all the conversations and Mitch, I don't by any means want you to think any of my comments were like, oh, like I don't see the beauty in the tradition of the Catholic faith. So please trust and believe that that conflict exists in me because there's so many beautiful areas like the Marian tradition that teaches me about the feminine divine that I tap into regularly. Like even are you were just waiting for uh, I'm, I'm recording but uh, before we'll start I'll, I'll preface what we're doing right now and then we'll go into all the discussion and pray of course so all right here's a call like yeah you could pray Open your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> <That is> pray. <laughs> sorry you... all right let me okay so uh, let me preface okay uh three two one Hey, what's up, you guys? So I'm here with David, and I'm here with Jarek, and we just finished a discussion talking about Filipino and Catholicism and mental health and all the all the interesting tidbits that went in it. So we're going to pretty much have a post-discussion on it because um, obviously it was so limited. There were so many things people were talking, and you only have so much time. Like me, David, only had, and Jarek only had like one line really to say anything. So um, there was a whole lot to get into. So um, let's have some fun. Let's talk about what's going on. Um, we can start from the beginning and all, no, actually, we'll start with prayer, and then let's, let's go into discussion. So uh, take it off. Yeah, I think this is also indicative of poor catechesis, catechesis right? Um, I would I would want to venture and guess, like, how many people in that room believed in real presence in the Eucharist, right? And so um, if, 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 you, if you even know those words, um, you understand what that means. And then people are like, what is real presence and all that stuff, right? Um, and, and it kind of goes, I, one thing that I wanted to jump in with Jarek when he was talking about Nietzsche is, um, the line, I believe it's Nietzsche, he's saying, to live is to suffer, and to live is to find meaning in that suffering. And I feel that is so powerful in the Catholic Church, because whereas in Buddhism, there's suffering, there's this idea of suffering, but you have to let go of earthly things, and you have to do it within yourself. But within the Catholic Church, we, we let go of those things and give it to Jesus, because he has suffered for, for all of us, right? And I think that's more powerful than you yourself trying to gain your own salvation versus that salvation has already won for you. St. John Paul II's Fides et Ratio, or Faith and Reason. Like, right now, we're in a culture that does not know who, we have forgotten who we are as Catholics, but our identity, just identity. Like, what is in the, the, the underlying, uh, I think, question that they're asking for all the the people in that uh, room is what is your identity? How do I identify as Catholics, Filipino, Filipinos, Filipino Americans? But, but what is our identity? And as Catholics, we could say that our identity is in Christ. Our identity, if we get the humanity of of Christ wrong, his or Christological anthropology, then we'll get ourselves wrong because Jesus Christ is a perfect man. This is a this is. Uh, the new Adam, if you will. And so I don't want to like get too crazy because I feel like I'm, <laughs> but I get really passionate about that. But I think that's what we have forgotten. You know, the ultimately, the ultimate thing is we're beloved, we're beloved uh, children of God, daughters and, and, and sons of, uh, of God. And we have forgotten that, you know? And so as Catholics, it's our, our job to kind of remind people who, who they are in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of what are uh, of a philosophical understanding. I think what we're trying to do is, I guess, there was a series before this about col colonialism, I guess, colonial like mentality. And I think they're trying to implicate like 
how Filipino like view themselves more like in a negative light as a result of Catholicism as like the way they colonized us. But there were there's thing there's like assumptions they have that shows that they didn't really know history. I mean this whole idea of like decolonization and stuff, you can't tend to forget that the like pre-colonial Philippines was not a great, great place like a utopia. There were like jars found in uh, Leyte that would mention human sacrifices and that they would sacrifice humans whenever the Datu or the head of the community, the chief, was sick. And that's what, like something like they forget and there was like other stuff like slavery and that slavery didn't end under just like the Filipinos. It ended when the Spanish came in because even like in the South, uh, slave, like slave, slavery continued, and they would still go into uh, Christian territories and like take slaves, and that was like a big thing in the Philippine history. Yeah, um, I guess my takeaway is that in in Filipinos and Catholicism and mental health, I think there's this idea in which prayer, a lot of it can be like, oh, just pray it away, you know, just walk it off type thing. And so there's a level in truth that where this conversation is and they want to get rid of that. And I and I and I see that if you're treating Catholicism as very like uh, just like very superstitious. Right. And very again, very nominal Catholic and like, oh, just pray it off. Like, wh why didn't you go to church or that thing? But at the same token, don't dismiss it outright like go go to jesus to bring give, give your sufferings to jesus and you like there can be miracles you know and and not to say that you should only do that right you should be going to your friends going to a therapist or whatever that you feel that will help you in that mental health but I think it's twofold. One, don't don't dismiss it outright, but at the same time, don't treat it as oh, just pray a rosary and everything will be okay, right? And so, um, I, I think that's where this conversation is, and and I think it's more on that second point where it's like just very, again, with the very culturally Catholic, you know, like just like where they don't where they, where they don't actually believe in the divinity. Um, to put it bluntly, that they don't believe in the divinity of Jesus where you can actually give him your problems and be at the foot of the cross. And so, but again, obviously I believe like you can and obviously still find resources and everything. So um, we'll, ha we'll have a conversation. We'll continue this conversation, but I just want to end it here. Um, hey everyone, thank you again for watching. You can comment below, show me, tell me what you think in this conversation. And if you like this video, please like and sh share and subscribe and see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace, peace, peace. Be with you.